To the place where the glory flow under an open heaven, everywhere I go. Oh, I need to reach up to sunship. Can't never be slack. I need to take a grip. I gotta get all of the benefits from being no being to God's profit. Yeah, the real church of Christ got the fivefold. The fivefold turn the people to disciples. The disciples go and live out the word. The word becomes flesh. Not some little mummy verse. But Ephesians 4:11, I'm the leaders of today. Got people in the building only leading them astray. Cause the leaders themselves only stuck at one stage. But for me, I gotta say. Gotta go up, gotta get up to spiritual maturity Cannot linger, no stick figure, that is my priority Gotta listen to the ones with the high authority It's the fivefold, yeah, the fivefold to get me where I need to be Gotta grow up, gotta get up to spiritual maturity Cannot linger, no stick figure, that is my priority Gotta listen to the ones with the high authority It's the fivefold, yeah, the fivefold to get me where I need to be, yeah, yeah God, I wanna do your will, but I was left by myself to drill Going and use a skill every Sunday Hear a sermon and I'm okay Lead worship and I'm okay I'll share at the door and I'm okay That is what the people and them say But I gotta know what you say It doesn't matter what you do in a building You still could be living like a heathen Fly on time at every meeting But at your bedside you ain't seeking me Think you can do it by yourself No, I gave these gifts just to help you Reach to maturity So you can soar like a nigga with me Gotta grow up, gotta get up to spiritual maturity Cannot linger, no stick figure, that is my priority Gotta listen to the ones with the high authority It's the fivefold, yeah, the fivefold to get me where I need to be Hello everyone, thank you for tuning in and joining me on the Teach Me to Obey radio broadcast I am your host Anita Punchi Lewis. We will be continuing as we study the office of the teacher, one of the offices of the fivefold ministry. I would have mentioned that the fivefold ministry consists of the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors, and the teachers. So now we are touching on the teacher. We started on the teacher last week, and I'm continuing on the teacher. The outcomes of fivefold of his teaching, transformation, growth, and turning believers into mature, effective ambassadors. One of the reasons why the church has ignored or downgraded the office or function of the fivefold office teachers as a critical part of the fivefold team is lack of understanding of the full scope of their assignment. The reality is that where believers are not well taught, they tend to live in babyhood syndrome, ever hearing nice sounding sermons, but never able to make the heart and mind transition so necessary for real growth to take place. Teaching is serious business, and the purpose of Jesus is that it is the main means Holy Spirit uses for building up the believers to know Elohim and walk in his principles of life. That is why, as the church prepares for the end of the age, one of the critical signs will be the restoration of the office of teacher in congregations and ministries which are true kingdom communities. The transformation process. The transformation of the lives of believers is the end purpose 
of True Fivefold Teaching Ministry. The transformation of the lives of believers is the end purpose of True Fivefold Teaching Ministry. This implies that our new life in Jesus is a process with a start and end in the mind of our Redeemer. We start the journey by being born again by the Word as Holy Spirit uses it to convict and thereafter seal us into Jesus. 1 Peter 1.23 Having been born again, not of corruptible seed, but incorruptible, through the Word of God which lives and abides forever. To grow in spiritual life, therefore, the young believer should constantly desire the sincere milk of the Word. 1 Peter 2, verses 1 to 2. So abandon every form of evil, deceit, hypocrisy, feelings of jealousy and slander. In the same way that nursing infants cry for milk, you must intensely crave the pure spiritual milk of God's Word. For this milk will cause you to grow into maturity, fully nourished and strong for life. All believers need to graduate from drinking the milk of the word, that is, the easy portions for the new convert and young believers, and grow to appreciate the meat and bones of the word so that they can mature to become intimate with Jesus when his word rules their thoughts, words, attitudes, and deeds. Hebrews 6, 1 to 3. Now it is the time for us to progress beyond the basic message of Christ and advance into perfection. The foundation has already been laid for us to build upon. Turning away from our dead works to embrace faith in God, teaching about different baptisms, impartation by the laying on of hands, resurrection of the dead, and eternal judgment. So with God's enablement, we will move on to deeper truths. With time, we will walk in the spirit of adoption and our identity as sons of Elohim requires us to get out of dependency on others, but to rather take responsibility for teaching others who are younger in the faith or life experiences. Hebrews 5, 12 to 14. You have been believers so long now that you ought to be teaching others. Instead, you need someone to teach you again the basic things about God's word. You are like babies who need milk and cannot eat solid food. For someone who lives on milk is still an infant and doesn't know how to do what is right. Solid food is for those who are mature, who through training have the skill to recognize the difference between right and wrong. The word may be unpleasant to those who hear, but when they receive and allow it to do the assigned work in them, the results are greatly manifested. Believers who do not grow and mature to take their places as disciples making disciples become like the barren fig tree worthy of destruction. I want to repeat that. Believers who do not grow and mature to take their places as disciples making disciples, they become like the barren fig tree worthy of destruction. And the story of the barren fig tree is found in Matthew 21, 19. It is also proof that they are not truly abiding in Jesus, as John 15, 1 to 8 says. Reproduction is a responsibility. We must constantly bear in mind that part of our responsibility as disciples of Jesus, sons of Elohim, and the royal priesthood is to reproduce after our own kind. It takes disciples to make disciples. 2 Timothy 2 verse 2. You have heard me teach things that have been confirmed by many reliable witnesses. Now teach these truths 
to other trustworthy people who will be able to pass them on to others. Breaking down the outcomes of true teaching ministry. This is what should be evident in the lives of believers when they receive true teaching from the office of the fivefold teacher. Scripture reveals to us that these outcomes are valid expectations from a good teaching ministry. Number one, the believers are made to know and understand all that Jesus requires of them to function as valid members of his body, the church. This happens when the whole counsel of the word is systematically exposed for their understanding and learning. Matthew 28, 20. Teach them to obey everything that I have told you. You can be sure that I will be with you always. I will continue with you until the end of the world. Number two. Number two of the outcomes of true teaching ministry. Consequently, the believers are challenged to be transformed from mere believers to true disciples. These are believers who come to the point of consecrating all of their beings and possessions to Jesus and willingly enthrone him as king of their lives. Matthew 16, 24 to 26. Then Jesus said to his disciples, If anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever desires to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. For what profit is it to a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? Or what will a man give in exchange for his soul? Number three. Good teaching therefore renews the mind by washing off old worldly mindsets and ways of thinking. Romans 12 verse 2. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Ephesians 4.23 Your hearts and minds must be made completely new. Those who are well taught are able to locate the negative mindsets and strongholds that are within and deal with them. 2 Corinthians 10 verses 3 to 6. We are human, but we don't wage war as humans do. We use God's mighty weapons, not worldly weapons, to knock down the strongholds of human reasoning and to destroy false arguments. We destroy every proud obstacle that keeps people from knowing God. We capture their rebellious thoughts and teach them to obey Christ. And after you have become fully obedient, we will punish everyone who remains disobedient. Number four, good teaching will, with time, produce a new mindset and change of attitude regarding life within the believers. This new mindset is the mind of Jesus which manifests in a soul rooted in the love of God and love of fellow humans. This mindset powers a life without condemnation because it easily aligns with the mind and will of Jesus. Romans 8, 5 to 8. Those who are dominated by the sinful nature think about sinful things, but those who are controlled by the Holy Spirit Think about things that please the Spirit. So letting your sinful nature control your mind leads to death. But letting the Spirit control your mind leads to life and peace. For the sinful nature is always hostile to God. It never did obey God's laws, and it never will. That's why those who are still under the control of their sinful nature cannot please God. 1 Corinthians 2, verses 14 to 16. And this is point number four, which says good teaching will in time produce a new mindset and change of attitude regarding life within the believers. 1 Corinthians 2, 
verses 14 to 16 reads, But people who aren't spiritual can't receive these truths from God's Spirit. It all sounds foolish to them, and they can't understand it. For only those who are spiritual can understand what the Spirit means. Those who are spiritual can evaluate all things, but they themselves cannot be evaluated by others. For who can know the Lord's thoughts? Who knows enough to teach him? But we understand these things, for we have the mind of Christ. Number five. Good teaching creates the right foundation for the believers to exercise real faith as they learn to believe the word of God implicitly and explicitly because it has been internalized by consistent study and meditation to be lived out. It therefore flows from the heart in prayers that are in alignment with the will of God. Joshua 1, 8. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate in it day and night, that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have good success. Number six. Believers who are well taught learn to trust God as a personal father and focus on him in who they believe. Consequently, they are not moved by what they see, but are able to rest in his providence. 2 Corinthians 4, 18. For we fix our attention not on things that are seen, but on things that are unseen. What can be seen lasts only for a time, but what cannot be seen lasts forever. Number seven, believers who are well taught will understand the purpose of Jesus for their lives and receive clear directions from the word. They are directed as to how to live out life on earth as ambassadors to manifest his life and light to the world and to reconcile the loss to him. Number eight, well taught believers who eventually come to a place of spiritual maturity, are able to rightly divide the word to apply it to their everyday circumstances. 2 Timothy 2, 15. Be diligent to present yourself approved to God, a worker who does not need to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Number nine. Well-taught spiritually mature believers cannot be easily deceived. They are able to see through the cunning schemes of others. Number 10. Well-taught and grounded believers will withstand all the storms of life and even thrive in the midst of adversity. Matthew 7, 24 to 25. Therefore, whoever hears these sayings of mine and does them I will liken him to a wise man who built his house on the rock. And the rain descended, the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on that house, and it did not fall, for it was founded on the rock. Number 11. Well-taught believers who reach to spiritual maturity are extremely sensitive to the Holy Spirit. They hear the voice of the Master and are able to discern truth from error. John 10, 27 to 28. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. And I give them eternal life, and they shall never perish, neither shall anyone snatch them out of my hand. Number 12. Well-taught believers, in whom the word takes root in their hearts and minds, are able to pray according to the perfect will of God as contained in his word and as prompted by Holy Spirit. 1 John 5, 14. Now this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. Romans 8, 26. Also, the Spirit helps us. We are very weak, 
but the Spirit helps us with our weakness. We do not know how to pray as we should, but the Spirit himself speaks to God for us, even begs God for us. The Spirit speaks to God with deep feelings that words cannot explain. Number 13. Well-taught believers who have reached spiritual maturity, in whom the Word has taken root in their hearts and minds, are also able to wage effective spiritual warfare with effective use of the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Ephesians 6, 10-18. In so doing, they emulate Jesus when he overcame all seductions of Satan with it is written, found in Matthew 4, 1 to 9. Number 14. Well-taught believers often grow to become full, mature sons of God who have greater capacity to escape the snares of prolonged codependency because they know the word and therefore have consciences which are alive, responding to the inner witness of Holy Spirit. In this way, they are able to enjoy a vibrant personal relationship with God as Father and Jesus as Sovereign King, and therefore hear from and are led by Holy Spirit in matters of life and ministry, independent of their teachers, mentors, or spiritual coverings. They still love, respect, and bless such destiny helpers God placed in their lives, but they are not dependent on them in an unhealthy way, since they would have spiritually grown up as a result of having good, sound teaching. Believers who lack sound teaching often end up as codependents on their leaders for an extremely long time, God becomes a distant, unknown God. Their relationship with Him often tends to gravitate towards strangers, babyhood, orphans, and unwilling slaves. Number 15. Good teaching will equip believers with a spiritual sensitivity to recognize the spirit of the age which seeks to influence their thoughts attitudes, words, and deeds so that they escape its snares. In this way, they are able to say like Jesus in John 14, 30, the prince of this world comes and has nothing in me. James 4, 4 to 5. So you people are not loyal to God. You should know that loving the world is the same as hating God. So if a person wants to be a friend of the world, he makes himself God's enemy. Do you think the scripture means nothing? It says, the spirit that God made to live in us wants us for himself alone. Number 16. Those who are well taught become rooted in the word. As they know the mind of God, their heavenly father, they face their day-to-day -day opportunities and challenges with greater confidence. Their self-esteem is healthy and not blurred. They know who they are in Jesus and who he is in them. They do not have an identity crisis because of this. Colossians 2, 6-8 As you therefore have received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk in him rooted and built up in him and established in the faith as you have been taught, abounding in it with thanksgiving. Beware lest anyone cheat you through philosophy and empty deceit, according to the tradition of men, according to the basic principles of the world, and not according to Christ. Number 17. Those who are well taught and built up in the word know that all things will work together for their good. They are not shaken when confronted with adverse winds. Romans 8, 28 to 29. Number 18. Well taught believers know that in spite of every good thing, 
God may bless them with, nothing can compare with the riches of the world to come. They are fully engaged in occupying for him in this present life, advancing his kingdom everywhere he plants them. They know with strong assurance that the full deal will manifest when Jesus returns to set up the kingdom in its fullness and reward the faithful. They therefore seek first the kingdom and its righteousness, knowing implicitly that all the need in this present world will be graciously provided by their loving Heavenly Father. 2 Peter 1 verse 3 As his divine power has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness. And number 19. Well-taught believers know that the end of the disobedient and those who renounce their faith in Christ is eternal death or separation from God, and they make a value decision to reject that option. God then keeps them and upholds them by his grace. Jude 1, 24. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. So I would have given 19 points of the outcome of true teaching ministry. In conclusion, when the importance of all these outcomes are considered, the church will know the essential function of the teaching ministry and embrace the fivefold office of the teacher. Those believers who are called to the office of the teacher would not want to be known by any other identity. The heart, the mind, the attitude, and the walk of believers will be positively transformed whenever and wherever the fivefold office teaching function is given sufficient space and scope to operate. This has been Teach Me to Obey with yours truly, Anita Punchi Lewis. Until next week, same time. To the place where the glory flow Under an open heaven everywhere I go Oh, I need to reach up to sunship Can't never be slack, I need to take a grip I gotta get all of the benefits From being no being to cause profit yeah. The real church of Christ got the fivefold The fivefold turn the people to disciples The disciples go and live out the word The word becomes flesh, not some little mummy verse But Ephesians 4, 11, I'm the leaders of today Got people in the building only leading them astray Cause the leaders themselves only stuck at one stage But for me, I gotta say Gotta grow up, gotta get up to spiritual maturity Cannot linger, no stick figure, that is my priority Gotta listen to the ones with the high authority It's the fivefold, yeah, the fivefold to get me where I need to be Gotta grow up, gotta get up to spiritual maturity Cannot linger, no stick figure, that is my priority Gotta listen to the ones with the high authority It's the fivefold, yeah, the fivefold to get me where I need to be, yeah, yeah. God, I wanna do your will, but I was left 
by myself to drill Going and use a skill every Sunday Hear a sermon and I'm okay Lead worship and I'm okay I should write the door and I'm okay That is what the people and them say But I gotta know what you say It doesn't matter what you do in a building You still could be living like a heathen Fly on time at every meeting but at your bedside you ain't seeking me Think you can do it by yourself No, I gave these gifts just to help you Reach to maturity So you can soar like a needle with me Gotta grow up, gotta get up To spiritual maturity Cannot linger, no stick figure That is my priority Gotta listen to the ones With the high authority It's the fivefold, yeah the fivefold To get me where I need to be